cold emails suck when they sound like every other boring robotic message out there. But what if you could send emails so personal they feel like you spent hours researching without actually doing any of the work? Today, I'm breaking down how I built an AI-powered system that scrapes websites, extracts key insights, and writes highly personalized cold emails on autopilot. The same system I've used to lend clients and generate revenue without any manual outreach. If you're new here, my name is Clarence. I run a one-man agency that I've scaled to $80,000 per month using AI and automation. I don't just talk about this stuff. I use it every day to lend clients for my own business and help my clients do the same for them. The workflow I'll be showing today isn't just theory. It is battle tested. I've personally used it to book meetings, close deals and drive revenue on autopilot. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how it works. Before we dive into this workflow, a quick heads up. If you want to download this exact automation, it is available inside my school community, along with a ton of other resources on AI, automation, and scaling your business. You'll get access to my step-by-step -step video guides, edit and blueprints, proven business SOPs, and live Q&A sessions every week. So if you're serious about automating client acquisition, it is all inside. All right, that is enough self-promo. Let's get into the workflow. The first thing that kicks off this entire automation is the webhook node inside N8N. This node is basically the entry point for our system. It just sits there waiting for a signal to start the workflow. In this case, that signal comes from Airtable. Now to show you exactly how this works, I'll jump into my Airtable CRM and trigger the automation. Every lead in my database has a start enrichment checkbox. When I check this box, Airtable instantly sends a webhook to N8N, passing along all the key details of that lead, like their name, email, company website, and more. This webhook acts as the handshake between Airtable and N8N, telling the system, hey, it's time to enrich and personalize the lead for outreach. So when I click this checkbox and I go back to Enit and go to executions, we should see the workflow start running. Yes, there you go, it's running. So the automation from Airtable to Enit and works perfectly. The workflow has finished as you can see. So after the webhook, next comes the Airtable node, which takes the ID that was retrieved from the webhook, which was sent by Airtable. You can see it on the bottom left. And it uses that record ID to retrieve everything we need from name, email, phone number, job title, company name, website and profile, industry and locations. So now we have all the lead details, all the lead information that we had in our CRM in N8N. But this raw information alone won't cut it. We still need to enrich the lead, extract insights and turn it into something actually useful for cold outreach. Now that we have all the leads details, the next step is to gather more context about their company. We start off by scraping the company's homepage to retrieve its full HTML content. You can see all of the HTML on the right side. For this demonstration, let's take a look at the leads website. The leads website is called Making Space. As you can see, the homepage provides a general overview, but doesn't really delve into specific details we might need for personalized outreach. However, it features a navigation menu with links to pages like About Us, for employers, for professionals, press, these sections most likely contain the in-depth information we're after. By extracting these links, we can identify and target the most relevant pages for deeper insights, ensuring our outreach is both informed and tailored. Let me move back over to N8N. For those who need a little extra confirmation, if you look here, you see the website we scraped is making space and all of the text that was on the website, but also the navigation links that were in the header or in the footer of the website are somewhere buried inside of this HTML. Now that we've scraped the homepage, the next step is cleaning up the raw HTML to make it usable. Right now, the data is cluttered with code, as you can see, scripts and unnecessary elements, which isn't useful for us and also isn't useful for the AI. To fix this, we use a code node that strips out scripts, styles, and all HTML tags, leaving behind only plain readable text. 
It also cleans up extra spaces and decodes special characters, making sure we get a clean output. The code you see in the middle of your screen is the code we use to filter the raw HTML to a cleaned plain text version. The code is pretty straightforward. It just looks for the symbols you see here and replaces all of them with either a space or with nothing. So we turned the raw HTML, you can see in the top left, into a pretty neatly filtered plain text that you can see here on the right side. This filtered text won't be used right away, but we'll need it later when we extract key insights from the company's website. For now, it just ensures we're not wasting AI tokens on unnecessary data. Now that we have the cleaned up text from the homepage, the next step is extracting all the clickable links from the same homepage. To do so, we use another code node. The reason we do this is that the homepage itself usually doesn't contain deep insights we need, as I showed you, but it does provide links to pages that do, like about us, case studies maybe, a solutions page or product page if they sell products. To extract these links, we use a code node that scans the HTML and pulls out every tag, which represents a clickable link. The code then formats this into a list of URLs, which you can see on the right side, at the bottom right actually, filtering out any empty or broken links. Once again, the code that we used for filtering the HTML to only extract clickable links is in the middle of your screen. For those who aren't familiar with coding, this can easily be regenerated using ChatGPT or any other LLM. It looks a lot more difficult than it actually is. All you have to ask the LLM is to write you a code that takes raw HTML from a homepage and extracts all URLs. And it'll give you something very similar to this, if not the same as this. So now that we have a structured list of every clickable page linked on the homepage, we can now analyze this entire list of URLs to determine which ones are the most valuable for lead enrichment and which we want to scrape in the future. Since all of these URLs are outputted as separate items. You can see there are 53 separate items. The next step is consolidating them into a single structured list. Right now, they're all separate, but to make it easier for the next step where we determine which pages are the most valuable, we need to merge them into one item so we can use them as a singular input for our LLM. This ensures that the AI receives a clean organized list of all URLs instead of multiple scattered entries. With everything combined into one structured input, we're now ready to analyze which of these pages contains the most useful information for lead enrichment. Now we should have a structured list of all the links from the homepage. The next step is figuring out which ones actually matter for personalizing our outreach. Not every page is useful. Things like blogs, career pages, pricing, and legal pages don't really help us craft a compelling email. To solve this, obviously, we use an LLM to analyze all of the extracted URLs, all 53 of them, and pick the three most valuable ones for lead enrichment. These are typically like about pages containing the company's founding story, mission and values, which help us craft a natural personalized cold opener. Could also be things like case studies and success stories, because these showcase past clients, giving us insights into who they work with and how they solve their problems. Another one could be use cases and solutions. These explain what the company actually does and how they help their customers, which can help us tailor our outreach towards them. And of course, I'm always about full transparency. So here is the exact prompt we have given to the LLM. This prompt ensures it picks the right pages. As you can see, we've defined strict selection criteria, telling the AI to prioritize pages that give us deeper insights into the company's story, clients, and their services. At the same time, we make sure it excludes anything irrelevant like blogs, pricing pages, or contact forms. Having a prompt like this then returns a clean structured list of exactly three URLs. You can see it picked the about page, it picked a partners page, and it picked a press page. And sure, we always pull the best possible information before moving forward with this flow. Now that we have the three most valuable URLs, the next step is processing them individually so we can scrape each one separately. 
The reason we need to do this is that the HTTP request node that you can see right here can only handle one URL at a time. It can't process multiple pages in a single request. So we have to split the one item, which is passed by the LLM into three items, which you can see it turns from one item. If you look at the LLM towards the split node into three items between the split node and the HTTP request, what the split node does is it takes the three URLs and breaks them into separate items. So it takes the three in one item into three individual items. This means instead of sending one big list of URLs into the HTTP request node, which wouldn't work, each URL is passed through as its own request, ensuring that every page is scraped properly. Now that the URLs are split, the HTTP request node scrapes each page individually since it can process multiple URLs in one request. When I click the node, you can see the raw HTML output on the right side. For all three pages, it contains everything from the about page. It contains everything from the partners page. Before we can actually use this data, we need to clean it up just like we did with the home page, And that is what happens in the next step. But to make our lives a little easier before we pass it through to a code node, we first use an aggregate node. What the aggregate node does is it takes the three individual pages and puts them into a single item once again, because right now each page exists as an individual item in NITN. But to make it easier for us and for the code node, we need to group them together. The aggregate node does exactly that. It takes the scraped HTML from each page and combines it into a single structured output, ensuring that we still know which text belongs to which page. Now that we have aggregated the scraped HTML, you can see the three items that were outputted by the HTTP request node are turned into one item after the aggregate node. The next step is cleaning up the HTML by removing all unnecessary elements, scripts, styles, and extra code. We use the exact same code as we did for the home page because it is simple and effective. On the left side, you can see all of the HTML from the three pages. And on the right side, you can see that only plain text is returned for all three pages as well. At this point, we now have structured text only versions of the pages ready to be processed in the next step. Now that we have clean structured text from the home page and three key pages determined by AI itself, it is time to extract actual insights from the website. Raw text alone isn't very useful. We need to categorize it and summarize it into something actionable that we can use for our cold outreach. This is where the LLM comes in. It analyzes all the scraped content and distills the most important details into four key categories. It returns us insights about the about page. So the company's mission, what they do, their founding story. It gives us case studies if they were listed on any of the pages. In this case, they weren't. So it outputs not listed. It returns us use cases for how they position their service and their product. And it returns us product pages. So what the client actually sells and how they describe it themselves. If any of these aren't found, the AI marks them as not listed instead of making assumptions. This ensures we get fact-based insights instead of AI hallucinations. You can see the final extracted insights already in the output. I already went over them a bit. It's a structured summary of everything important about the company. And this data isn't just useful for cold email personalization. It is also gold for sales calls. Imagine jumping on a call and already knowing exactly how the company positions itself, what success stories they highlight and how they solve problems without spending any time researching. That is exactly the power of using and combining AI and automation. Now that we have determined the key insights and we've created a business analysis of this leads company. The next step is cleaning up the company name to use it in our cold outreach and make it more natural sounding. Sometimes company names include legal terms like LLC, Inc or limited or unnecessary suffixes like and co, which doesn't sound natural in a conversation. So this LLM node refines the name by stripping out the extras, ensuring we're left with the version people actually use in day to day communication. This 
small change makes our email feel more natural and human instead of looking like they were pulled straight from a database, which would end up in your email getting ignored. Now that we have the company name cleaned up, the next step is one of the most important parts of the entire workflow, crafting a personalized cold email opener. When it comes to cold email, the first line is everything. It is a difference between getting a reply and being ignored. A generic opener like I came across your company and want to reach out screams mass email and gets deleted almost instantly. But when you start with something specific and relevant to the company, it feels like you actually took the time to research them. Even though this entire process is automated, they'll never know. To generate a strong opener, we use another large language model that analyzes the about page summary. Why the about page? Because it usually contains the company's founding story, mission and values, which are a great conversation starter. The AI then crafts a short, natural sounding first sentence that references something meaningful about the company. Looking at the final output, you can see that the AI didn't just generate some generic fluff. It pulled real details from the company's own words, making the email feel human and intentional. Let me quickly show you guys the prompt that generated this output. So the prompt is very straightforward. As you can see, all we told it to do, keep it friendly, casual, and easygoing, avoiding anything overly formal or salesy. And if you don't give it a maximum length, you might get an entire paragraph, which sounds robotic very quickly. And I've told it the specific output format I want, because we want to upload this personalized line directly into our CRM, but also directly into our email provider. If the output wouldn't be the exact same JSON each and every time, we wouldn't be able to copy and paste it or automatically copy and paste it into our email outreach. Okay. So now that we have all the enriched data, the next step is storing it in the CRM and sending the lead to instantly for outreach. In the CRM, we save key company insights. So we upload the summary or the key company insights. We update the status of the lead because once this flow has completed, we know that the lead is enriched and outreach is on the way. We add the clean company name. So let's say the scraped lead details included a company name with suffixes or something like co limited, you know, what I just talked about. We now have a clean version we can use for future reference. And we also upload the personalized line, uploading the personalized line into your CRM, especially when testing out new variations makes it much easier for you to double check the output. You don't have to go into each execution separately inside of NADN, which will save you a lot of time in the long run. Believe me on that. At the same time, the lead is updated in our CRM. The lead is also uploaded to instantly our email service software where it is automatically added to an outbound sequence. This means the entire process from scraping to outreach happens without any manual input. Now that the lead has been uploaded, I'm switching over to instantly to show you how everything comes together. Here you can see that the lead has been successfully added with their contact details, the clean company name and the personalization, everything we need to start outreach. At this point, the lead is fully enriched and ready to go, meaning the email sequence can start running automatically with highly personalized messaging at scale. And that is it. A fully automated AI powered system that scrapes websites, extracts key insights and writes highly personalized cold emails on autopilot. This workflow isn't just about saving time. It's about sending better emails that actually get replies. No more generic outreach, no more wasted leads, just high converting personalized emails at scale. As I already mentioned, if you want to download this exact workflow, it is available inside my school community, along with step-by-step -step automation guides, N8N and blueprints, proven business SOPs and live Q and A sessions every week. Everything you need to scale your own outreach and automate client acquisition is inside the community. If you found this valuable, hit like subscribe and drop a comment if you have any questions or ideas for the future videos. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.